Hello everybody, uh, I'm just trying to make a YouTube video in a new format, trying to show my face at least in the beginning of the video. Let's see how this one works and here I am trying to record 8 problems from chapter 1 where I'm showing you how the concepts of physics are being applied to work out practical situations in physics. I hope you follow along and that it helps you to understand this a little bit more. Here we go, thank you. And here you have the first question that says find the largest angle for which the sine in here you have the first one that talks about the largest angle for which sine and tangent agree to within two significant figures so on the left hand side now you have degrees next column gives sine theta and the third one gives tan theta as you can see here for zero degrees of course both sine and tan is zero for 10, uh, 0 0.10, it's 0 0.10, both are equal, exactly the same. When the angle becomes 0 0.12, it's again 0 0.12. 0 0.20, sine and tan are still the same. But when we get to 0 0.024, or rather 0 0.25, you see that sine and tan are no more the same. So up to 0.24 degrees, sine theta and tan theta are equal. So the question says, what's the largest angle? So here in this case, the largest angle is of course 0.24 degrees. Uh, 0.24 radians rather, because the angle on the left hand side is in radians. So remember that all this time these were in radians and now to change radians into degrees you multiply by 180 divide by pi because 180 degrees is pi radians. So you multiply by 180 divide by pi. That's how you change radians into degrees which gives you 12 degrees. And that's with two significant figures. And you also note uh, that theta and sine theta are the same when theta is small. We'll be using that so many times in physics. Whenever the angle is small and the angle is in radians, sine theta is exactly equal to th uh, theta. Well, that brings us to the second question, which says, what is the percent uncertainty in the volume of a spherical beach ball whose radius is 0 0.84 plus or minus 0 0.04 meter? So the actual value is 0 0.84, but it could go plus or minus 0 0.04 meter. Volume of a sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube. That's 4 by 3 pi times 0 0.84 cube, uh, which gives 2.483 meter cube. Now, to find the minimum volume, we use the minimum radius. And the minimum radius is 0.84 minus 0 0.04 so we get 4 by 3 pi 0 0.80 so that is 0 0.84 minus 0 0.04 that's how we get 0 0.80 that gives a volume of 2.145 meter cube and then similarly find the maximum volume for which the radius would be 0 0.84 plus 
0.04 and that's how we get 0 0.88 now to find the change in volume the difference you have to add the two the maxima and the minima add them and divide by two you take the difference I'm sorry you take the difference between maxima and minima v max minus v min take the difference and divide by 2 so one half the maximum which is 2.855 take away the minimum which is 2.145 and that gives 0.355 meter cube which is the deviation and now to find the percent uncertainty Take this value, divide by the volume for a radius of 0.84, which is 2.483, times 100 because it's, in, it's expressed as a percentage, which gives about 14%. Bringing us to the third question that says, the diameter of the moon is 3480 kilometers. What's the surface area of the moon? How many times larger is this compared to the surface area of the earth? Now the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. And there are many times that you're going to use this formula for surface area of a sphere. It's 4 pi r squared. And that gives the surface area as 4 pi times the radius in meters is 3.480 times 10 to the 3 by 2. Because what was given was the diameter. Okay. Which gives 3.80 times 10 to the 13 meter squared. In the B part, to find the surface area of the earth, Use the radius of the earth, which is 6.38 times 10 to the 6. So, since we are looking for a ratio, divide the surface area of the earth by the surface area of the moon. The 4 pi's cancel out. And it gives us 13.4. So, the surface area of the earth is... 13.4 times greater than the surface area of the moon. In the next question, there are many sailboats moored at a marina 4.4 kilometers away on the opposite side of a lake. You are staring at one of the sailboats because when you are lying flat at the water's edge, you can just see its deck but none of the side. You then go to that sailboat on the other side of the lake and measure that the deck is 1.5 meter above the level of the water. And using the figure where the height is given as 1.5 meter, you got to find the radius of the earth. Quite an interesting question here. And let's look carefully at the diagram. You see uh, the radius of the earth here, both of these, you're lying down here and watching it. That's the boat. You are just able to see, or right, as you lie down here and watch, you're just able to see the deck. The distance from you to the deck is D. The height is H and the radius of the earth is R, which you're going to find. Okay. So that's the height now. Now looking at this figure, let's call this ABC. And see, you, you see that ABC is a right angle triangle here. And when you apply the Pythagorean theorem there, you get d squared plus r squared is equal to r plus h. Remember that this is r plus h, 
which is the hypotenuse. So when you expand the right hand side you get r squared plus 2 times r h plus h squared and then the r squareds get cancelled on both sides so you get approximately d squared is 2 r h because h squared is considerably smaller than 2 r h so this is neglected from which you make are the subject and now this is in meters 4.4 kilometers is 4400 meters and you get the radius of the earth as 6.5 times 10 to the 6 meter now this is an approximate calculation and more accurate calculations give the radius of the earth as 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meter now for such an approximate method of calculation that is not at all bad. Coming to the fifth one now you try to find the diameter of the moon by holding a pencil in front of your eye at a position where its blunt end just blocks out the moon. You'll understand that as you look at the figure and you've got to find the diameter of the moon okay so that's the moon and that's the distance now understand that this is where the pencil is the blunt edge it's completely blocking the moon off and you're watching from here so that's the distance of the pencil from your eye while this is the distance of the moon uh, from your eye um, and of course it's not drawn to scale now looking at this and uh, knowing that angle is measured you know you could measure the you could define the angle here as either the diameter of the pencil divided by the pencil distance or the diameter of the moon divided by the distance of the moon because both of those subtend the same angle here so using that ratio and making uh, the diameter of the moon the subject you know the diameter of the pencil the distance of the pencil is given to so that's 0.75 here and then the distance of the moon which gives 3500 kilometers as the diameter of the moon now remember that this problem chiefly depends on the idea of the definition of an angle in radians angle is defined as length of the arc and which is what is here length of the arc which is the diameter in this case divided by the distance so that's how you define angle in radians which brings us to the sixth question uh, this is about density density of an object is defined as mass divided by volume and if the mass and volume of a rock is measured its mass is 8 gram and his volume is 2.8325 centimeter cube you got to find the density and this is chiefly talking about significant figures density is mass by volume so you have 8 gram by 2.8325 centimeter cube which gives 2.82 gram per centimeter cube which is approximately 3 gram per centimeter cube we are only using one significant figure in the result because you always go with the lowest number of significant figures which is 1 in this term so the answer can only have 
as many significant figures as in the lowest one of the terms. Okay, so it's it's one here. So the answer cannot have more than one significant figure. And uh, finally, the speed of an object is given by the quantity or the equation y is a t q minus b t, where t refers to time. What are the dimensions of a and b, and what are the SI units for the constants a and b? Now, this question is about dimensions and knowing that, so that's velocity, okay, knowing that the dimension of the term here should be the same as the dimension of the two terms on the right hand side. So the dimension of velocity and that of AT cube must be equal and also that of BT. So that's the idea. So the, and so do the units. The units and the dimensions must be the same. So the unit of AT cube and the unit of V must be the same. Therefore you can find the unit of A because it should be velocity by T cube and the dimension of velocity is L by T. Why? Because velocity is displacement by time displacement by time. So that makes it L by T to the power 4. Taking T to the power 4 to the top, you make it T to the negative 4, so you get the... Actually, this is the dimension of A. I've written it as the unit, but it's the dimension. Similarly, the unit of BT should be the same as that of velocity. And so you can rearrange and B should have the same dimension or unit as that of V by T. And the dimension of velocity is again L by T by T gives you L by T squared, which is L T raised to minus 2. And the units are M S raised to minus 4 and M S raised to minus 2. So, I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope you understand how to uh, do problems in physics. Thank you and good luck. This to question number 8 in which one mole of atoms consists of 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 individual atoms. Let's see our Gato number. And if a mole of atoms were spread uniformly over the surface of the earth, how many atoms would there be per square meter? Now, quite an interesting question there. All right, so number of atoms per meter squared is, is given as 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Uh, so if you divide it by the total surface area of the Earth, you get uh, the number of atoms in one meter squared, you see? And that gives 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms divided by 4 pi radius of the earth in meters and square of that. That gives us 1.18 times 10 to the 9 atoms per meter squared.